armored personnel carriers get a whole load of nicknames. The most popular, battle taxis. Like taxis, you can flag them down. They know all the shortcuts, and they always get you home. These vehicles used to live in the shadow tanks. For years, their better armored, heavier gunned Big Brothers got all the glory. Today, armored personnel carriers take on tanks and slap them down. In World War I, APCs mounted machine guns. Fast forward to World War II, and they were mounting a whole lot more. Weaponologists realized that troops leaving their vehicle needed to be protected by covering fire. What you've got to be able to do is to suppress the enemy. If you simply try and jump out of the back and then get it to position to fight, you're incredibly vulnerable. So one of the features of half tracks would in fact be to have a 30 caliber or 7.92 machine gun or pairs of them on the top to keep the enemy's heads down. Armies also mounted bigger, more extreme weapons on their APCs. Everything from flamethrowing wind gun carriers to anti-aircraft systems. So you see this proliferation of all sorts of weapons and all sorts of devices onto the backs of armored vehicles by the end of World War II, and it became even more common afterwards. This evolution in heavily armed APCs resulted in the creation of the first infantry fighting vehicle, the Bronovaya Machina Piacota. To the west, the BMP-1. First seen in public in November 1967, the BMP was significantly smaller than Western APCs and had considerably greater firepower. Here is a vehicle that was tracked. It had a crew compartment in the back that could carry a squad of infantry under armor, but also had a low squat turret on the top of it, like a tank. It could turn in all directions. This weapon caught the rest of the world by surprise. And what happened, the United States and other powers looked at this and the arms race for armored fighting vehicle began. Unlike previous APCs that had slowly added more and more firepower to the frame, the BMP was designed from the outset to carry heavy weaponry. The BMP-1 was the first of a new generation of infantry vehicles called infantry fighting vehicles, IFVs. Now the infantry was expected to fight from the vehicle, not to dismount and fight, but actually to fight from the vehicle. When the Americans set about developing their next generation APC, the Bradley, they took note. It used to be that APCs were what you needed to get soldiers around the battlefield safely. But once the Soviets have got an APC with a big gun on it, the Americans want to put a big gun on their APC. Development of the M2 Bradley began in 1972. Designed to support America's main battle tank, the Abrams, it can carry six infantry and three crew. Its turret mounts an M242 25 millimeter chain gun capable of firing 200 rounds per minute. When the Bradley hit the battlefield, it was without question the toughest personnel carrier ever built. You had a weapon system here that was incomparable. You had a 25 millimeter chain gun, a very large auto cannon that could fire a variety of high explosive or armor piercing rounds. You could fire two anti-tank missiles from the Bradley to knock out enemy tanks at long range. And you also had machine guns. During the Gulf War, M2 and M3 Bradleys destroyed more Iraqi armored vehicles than America's main battle tank, the Abrams. The great advantage of the Bradley is it's not just reliant upon a cannon for its own defense. It also has the tow system, which is an anti-tank system, which is built in, which means it can take out the best of the enemy's main battle tanks. Since 1981, thousands of Bradleys have been fielded, making it a common feature of 21st century warfare. But as a fighting vehicle, it does have flaws. The 25 millimeter gun and turret, while impressive, takes up almost half the space meant for troop transport. Where previous American APCs had always carried a minimum squad of eight, the Bradley could only carry six. You can bolt all kinds of things onto an APC to turn it into an infantry fighting vehicle, but the thing you've got to keep in mind is when you put a gun onto it, 
you've got to take soldiers out of it. Some military analysts argue that the true purpose of an APC should be to transport troops in and out of battle, not taking on enemy tanks. With less armor and armament than a dedicated tank, infantry fighting vehicles are exposing their crews to cheap shots. This is like an astonishingly wrong-headedly stupid idea. The moment that turret starts to fire, it becomes the target for all kinds of hostile fire. So the fact that the turret or the turret crew is now engaging some target out there, not only are they at risk, but now all these poor bastards who are locked up in this box are at risk too. Fire! On the way! IFVs with serious weaponry or APCs that focus on transporting troops. For soldiers on the ground, it's immaterial. More than anything, what they want is protection. And that's why for over 100 years, weaponologists have tried to evolve, adapt, and improve the armor on APCs. It's no use being in the back of an armored personnel carrier if the enemy can still kill you.